wrong. How about the one two weeks ago? A woman, I'm saying, who the hell is she? Who is the woman? It's so unfair what's happening in our country. Our court system is a mess. What's happening in our country, they have to straighten it out. Who is the woman? And I'm sitting there like, oh, 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 I know. I know who you're referencing there, whose name you're too scared to say out loud. But in that video, it might not be clear. But what you just saw is Donald Trump stuck between a rock and the fact that he's an awful, broken, petty little shell of a man. Because he's attacking E. Jean Carroll there, don't get it twisted. That is exactly what he was talking about, making the claim that he's never met her and thus presumably did not sexually abuse her. Now, the interesting thing is that he was able to go several weeks without bringing her up. There were no bleats, no screenshots of her tweets, no references to her cat being named vagina. A couple of weeks went by. That is what an $83.3 million judgment against him bought. But at a certain point, even that isn't enough to stop this guy from weighing in. Now, that said, as you saw, he is scared to say her name. He kept it vague. But we know exactly who he's talking about. We know that he is defaming her. He is making claims that a court has already found to be untrue. He did meet her, he did know her, he did sexually abuse her. So it might be inconvenient for the MAGA world to hear, but that is what a court has already found. And he was supposed to stop talking about this because if he continues to make the claims that have already been shown to be defamation, then he could open himself up to more court cases. And that may be what he just did right there, according to a lawyer for E. Jean Carroll. Take a look at this. Do you watch these and could this warrant a third suit as you watch that? Uh, we certainly watch them. It's hard. It's hard not to. Every time Donald Trump speaks, um, you know, I think as we said at trial many times, he has the biggest megaphone in the world, uh, and so everyone hears them, including us and including our client E. Jean Carroll. And as you said, um, what he said was uh, was absolutely a lie. Two unanimous federal juries have found that not only did Trump know who E. Jean was, he sexually assaulted her, um, and and lied about it repeatedly. Everything he's said about her over the last five years has been a lie um, and has been defamatory. So we're watching, we're listening. Um, we had really hoped that, uh, as I think the jury found, um, that $83 million would maybe be enough to convince him to keep E. Jean Carroll's name out of his mouth. Um, apparently, he showed us this weekend that he really cannot control himself and that maybe it wasn't. Um, but you know, we'll see what, what happens as, as this continues to play up. So uh, the lawyer right there who is like doing her best to not be too excited, giddy about the fact that they may be able to do another go at Donald Trump over this. That's Sean Crowley, by the way, uh, is clear. They are watching all of these rally you know, performances, his little press conferences on True Social, and they're ready to go again. Now, I am curious, Ravana, what you think about is it worth it to them to go through another year or two of legal back and forth when she's already gotten $83.3 million? But he is still attacking her and the whole point was to get him to stop. At some point, does the judge need to go past just financial limitations? Like, Does he need to be barred from saying these things in some more substantive way? What do you think about all this? Well, I mean, as we've seen in the past in some of his other trials, being barred from making those statements hasn't necessarily been a deterrent. And then the enforcement mechanisms for those bars are typically fines imposed, which again, as this verdict has shown, is also not a deterrent for him. You know, but whether or not she pursues uh, you know further litigation down the line, I'd say is entirely up to her. You know, she seems to have the resources to be able to do it. So it's just whether or not she wants to go through the, you know, the arduous process. But I'm laughing to myself a little bit. I really feel like he thinks that he found a way to circumvent the law by just not saying her <laughs> name, which, uh, you know, obviously, when everyone is easily able to surmise who the subject of that statement is, yeah. uh, it doesn't matter whether or not you actually say her name. If everyone knows it's about her, you know, as far as uh, defamation law is concerned, you know, but just to the, the point of the damages, you know, the, the highest percentage of those damages, the biggest chunk was punitive. Um, which for anyone who doesn't know, punitive damages are awarded not to make the uh, plaintiff whole again, you know, not because that was part of what she actually suffered and needs that to repair, you know, the damage to her reputation. 
but it's damages awarded to punish as the name implies the defendant as well as to deter. And I just, you know, <laughs> for Donald Trump, it seems like he doesn't care. You know, maybe he's older, mm -hmm. he doesn't necessarily think that he's going to see out the <laughs> the days where he'll have to finish making these payments or he's hoping that, you know, the rubes in his base will just donate to go fund me's to pay it off. Uh, but he just seems like he doesn't care. And if he was anybody else, I would feel bad for his attorneys. If he was literally anybody else, I would feel bad that they have this, you know, unmanageable client, but they're choosing to represent Donald Trump. That's, yeah. you know, <laughs> the bet you've made. And now you have to lie in it with your huge man, baby, ridiculous and, <laughs> client, and look, I, former president. It probably bought, like, if you're Alina Haba, it probably bothered you at the beginning. But at this point, like, you've already lost everything you've been involved with. I don't know what reputation you're preserving at this point. Um, now, will uh, the MAGA world be able to donate the, his way out of this? Well, I doubt it. But. We did a report on that GoFundMe yesterday, and I think there were at $470,000 that have been raised at that point. It is now at $687,000. And I just, I feel like there is not a van big enough that we could like just take the MAGA world, throw them in it, and take them to a de deprogramming camp. Like that's $700,000 that you guys supposedly need for things like food and gas and gaudy Trump sneakers. How can you <laughs> afford to set this on fire for Donald Trump, a guy who is supposedly a billionaire? But I, I agree with you. Like, I'm sure he doesn't want to lose any more money. But that said, he is so broken and so mad and she is so a woman and we know that he hates that. And so he has to say something. And also, like you said, how much longer is he going to last? What is he holding on the money for anyway? You think he wants to give it to Don Jr. and Eric at this point? I kind of doubt it. So Trump, just keep making your stupid comments. I hope that E. Jean Carroll does go forward with another lawsuit. And I and I just I find it so weird. He was found to have sexually abused a woman. He's fined $83.3 million over it. You would think he would want to never mention this again, mm -hmm. but he brings it up. In rallies, like his audience doesn't mind the fact that he was found to have sexually abused a woman. What a weird country we live in. They like anyway. it. <laughs> they support they do. it. Not in they spite do. of it, but because of it. <sighs> there are broken people in a broken society, in a broken state.